Center for the Advancement of the Steady State Economy. You mentioned the President's emphasis on science and technology for the purpose of stimulating economic growth. My question is, given the dependence of R&D funding on economic growth at current levels of technology, which we know degrades our environment pursuant to the iPad equation, will you and the President be considering uh, macroeconomic policy reforms for a steady state economy at some point with a uh, relatively stabilized population and per capita consumption? Now that's a big one. Uh, <laughs> And, and uh, I would say in part it's above my current job description. Ma macroeconomic policy is, uh, is outside my domain. I certainly will be advising the President on science and technology issues related to sustainability, where the opportunities are for forms of economic growth that can proceed apace without wrecking the environment. Uh, I have often said the biggest challenge in this domain is the energy economy climate change challenge. Uh, which I've sometimes summarized by saying, without energy there is no economy, without climate there is no environment, and without economy and environment there's no well-being, so we better figure out how to get this right. Uh, I will be offering advice certainly on that topic. Uh, back here. Um, hi, John. Chris Russell. Uh, could you talk a little bit about alternative energy investments and the lag time that there's going to be? There's so much emphasis that the President's mentioned it as well about turning to alternative energy, but as you know, it's such a small percentage of the energy budget right now in terms of, of what we're using in this country. How, what's the chance of actually getting uh, more alternative energy online and which directions do you think that's going to be? Well, first of all, we are, as you point out, starting from a relatively low base in terms of the current contributions of wind energy, solar energy, uh, biomass energy, uh, and the like. Uh, the President's uh, emphasis is both on ramping up the rate of research and development a and demonstration of some of these technologies to get them uh, to larger levels, but also to focus on energy efficiency, where increases uh, uh, in e energy and use efficiency are really without question the fastest, surest, cheapest, uh, and cleanest leverage uh, we have on the energy issue in the short term. So I think you'll see a multi-phased uh, set of impacts where the largest impacts in the short term will come from efforts in improving end use efficiency, more efficient buildings, more efficient cars, more efficient manu manufacturing processes, uh, and so on. And you'll see the alternative energy supplies coming in somewhat more slowly but ultimately growing to a very large level. Uh, we're also going to need to pay attention to some of the conventional sources, uh, nuclear energy, what can we get done there, uh, the advanced fossil fuel technologies that would be capable of capturing and sequestering the carbon dioxide are going to be important. Uh, we are still living in a world that's about 80 percent dependent on fossil fuels, the United States more than 85 percent dependent. That's not going to change overnight and so we can't just say, well, we're going to go immediately all the way to unconventional renewables, we have no way to do that. We've got to fix, in various ways, the conventional options that we're using as well. And just on the nuclear, how do you see that um, moving forward in the short term in terms of um, more uh, plants coming up or whatever? Well, I think we are probably going to see some more nuclear power plants in this country. They'll be of a new generation that will be uh, characterized by better uh, safety characteristics. They, we hope, will be characterized by shorter construction times. Uh, we still have a problem uh, in this country that there's no agreed upon approach uh, for managing the radioactive wastes in the long run, and clearly the administration is going to be paying some attention to figuring out uh, how we're going to deal with that. If nuclear energy is to make a big dent uh, globally, uh, then we're going to have to be attentive to uh, breaking the linkages between nuclear energy technology and nuclear weapons technology, and I think the administration will be attentive to how we need to do that as well. Last question. Last question over here. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Jody Lieberman with the American Physical Society. Two questions. The first is, obviously, in safety state, the scientific community is very excited 
that the recent uptick in funding for the basic sciences. However, uh, history has shown that we've sometimes had these upticks followed by spectacular decreases. So my first question is, what is the administration doing to lay the foundation for avoiding the sort of boom and bust funding cycle in the basic sciences? My second question has to do with the relationship with Congress. And that is, what are you doing to uh, sort of convince Congress that the president's goals in the sciences are important, and in particular in the Senate? Thank you. I wish you'd said the House, because we have Congressman Gordon here, and I was going to say that uh, <laughs> That, that, uh, that, that Congressman Gordon and I have a great relationship and so I'm confident that it's all going to work just fine. Um, uh, but, but, I, but I do also have good relationships uh, with many of the key people uh, in, the, in the Senate. Uh, Chairman Rockefeller and Ranking Member Hutchison in the, in the Senate Committee on Commerce, Transportation and Science are, are uh, close friends and interlocutors. Uh, uh, Senator Bingaman in the in the Senate Energy Committee uh, and so on through the list. I, I actually think this administration is going to succeed in working well with Congress uh, on these issues. We are attentive to the boom and bust phenomenon. I talked about that in my confirmation uh, hearing. Uh, we're of course particularly attentive to the notion that the stimulus package, uh, if not matched by increases in the budgets uh, over time, uh, could contribute to that boom and bust phenomenon and we've been looking at ways with the various agencies to, to spend some of that money in a manner that yields benefits over the long run. For example, new facilities uh, and equipment that yield benefits uh, far beyond the, the time when the money is actually spent. Uh, but the short answer is uh, you're right, boom and bust is a potential problem. We're attentive to it and I think we will uh, work very well with the Congress in trying to avoid that.